In terms of um, welcoming refugee families into your school, um, could you just talk a little bit about the welcome that you've provided to them? Yes, so we have a range of um, different refugees from different parts of the world. So most recently, we've welcomed um, some uh, Syrian refugees into our school um, who've come in via Lebanon. Um, they've come with virtually nothing. So we arrange a speaker, same language speaker for them. So when they come to school and we meet them, we try to have somebody where possible who speaks the same language as them to make them feel as comfortable as possible. We um, meet with them to think about the journey that they've had to, uh, to the point of arriving at our school, which countries they've been part of and what their journey and their lived experience has been. We practically try to help them. So we provide uniform for those families. Um, we find out if the children have clothes to wear out of school as well. If they don't, we put an appeal out through our hardship fund or through connections we have in our community. And we try and provide um, clothing and general household resources for those families. So maybe pots and pans or bedding often they need and things like that. Amazing. Thank you. And what, what impact would you say it's had on the kind of wider school community? I think it's so one of our school values is Quinonia. It's about being community together. So we ensure that the other children are aware of those children's lived experience where possible and sensitively um, with the families involved. Um, and then we explain, explain what that means for those children. Um, I think it means that we're inclusive. It means that our school represents our community and it also gives the children a real chance to, to learn what's going on out there in the world. Mm -hmm. The world comes to you, doesn't it? <laughs> and is there Thank anything you. that you've particularly enjoyed as a school community in terms of uh, welcoming refugees into your community? I think everybody who's welcomed into our community brings something with them, whether it's whatever their experience is, and those experiences enrich the lives of others and help us understand our world better. So everybody joining our school and those children joining our school enriches our school community. Thank you. And have there been any challenges? Yes, there are lots of challenges. So those children arrive into our school, um, sometimes in year three or four, potentially having never attended any educational setting before. So not even knowing what school looks like, what the routines of school looks like. Those children tend not to speak any English at all. So they're completely new to English, they're completely new to routines. And the children have often experienced quite serious trauma um, that we can't help them process very easily because they don't have the English language to, to process that trauma. So it's about working with those families finding out their physical and immediate needs and then supporting the children to make friends, to settle, to have a same language buddy so that they can communicate and be heard where possible a staff who speaks their language so that they can communicate and ask lots of questions. Uh, it's about yeah explaining all of the routines to the family, the expectations, giving them what they need so they feel part of the community. Um, I didn't mention food bank as well. We run a weekly food bank, um, ensuring they've got access to all the things that they can do to materially meet the needs of their children and understand the school expectations so there's no miscommunications. And then it's about helping that language development um, so that the children, possibly a year down the line, can access some play therapy and then begin to process the trauma they've experienced. Mm -hmm. And we have two school-based play therapists. Okay, within the school community. Within the school. That's fantastic. Um, and are there any particular lessons that you feel you've learnt through welcoming refugee families into your school? To work closely with the parents to start with and to get as much information about the children's lived experience as possible before they start. Mm -hmm. um, so loud noises, which is a very obvious one, but sometimes at school when you're doing things that you think are fun, um, actually pre-warning those children or, or anticipating things um, but by knowing those children's lived experience you can preempt um, subject matter that might come up or similar lived experiences from other children um, you, yeah just get as much information as possible from parents 
um, or from carers from the community as those children start and come in so that you can preempt to meet their needs as best possible. And how have you found it when parents have come in without a level of kind of English language? How have you managed to sort of glean that information from, from the parents when there's not necessarily been easy communication. So where possible, we've used a member of staff as a translator. Um, we're very fortunate in one of our senior leaders is um, Arabic speaking. So where possible, we'll use her. Um, where possible, we'll use another, another member of staff, even if it's a teaching assistant or somebody to translate. Face-to-face um, -face translation is far more effective than using Google Translate. Um, we'll encourage them to bring a friend or a relative or someone from their community to, to, to translate. The mm. more we can do face-to-face -face with them as people means that you can be more empathetic, you can respond to what they're saying much more quickly when you're both speaking into a Google Translate or something like that. It, it, it loses that, that sort of personal touch. Mm -hmm. That was really helpful. And um, what um, would you say to other schools? So we're anticipating schools may be preparing now to welcome refugees from the Ukraine. And although there will be lots of differences, um, what would you say to them in terms of how they can prepare to welcome refugees into their school community? I would say to try to find out as much as possible about those children's lived experiences. So who in the family is coming who in the family is not coming have they what trauma have they experienced what bereavements have they experienced what have they come with what are the circumstances in which they're living now who are they living with what do they practically need how can schools help them in that way um, find out about the home in which they're living in in terms of space in terms of who they're living alongside what and what um, support those people can give them and what the school can do then to support and help as well, to find out about their prior schooling, their prior school experience so that you can celebrate um, what they've, you know, make connections with their school, mm -hmm. find out what they were doing at school before. Is there anything you can do that they were doing in school before to, to bring into the school they're doing now? So it's refugee children that have been to school before and do have prior schooling experience, often in maths, they might be very able. And then if they've got the same script that you can, use that to give them a chance to succeed as well. Mm, that's really helpful. And what about parents? What would you what advice would you give to parents within a school community in terms of how they can support uh, and, and welcome refugee families? So our parents contribute to the food bank, our parents contribute towards the hardship fund. Um, if we have parents from the same communities, we will make connections with their permission. So it's about making connections and welcoming them into the community, but at the pace of the person who's coming in, not at the pace of the other, of the other parents. Yeah, that's really helpful. And in terms of access to schooling, so we know that those coming from Ukraine will be able to access schooling um, um, in terms of their, their rights to access schooling. But what advice would you give to maybe host families that are welcoming in a family in terms of how they can help their, the guest family coming in to access schooling in the UK? Schooling in the UK, I think, is very different from any other country in terms of the diversity of types of schools you've got, in terms of your different faith primary schools, your academies and your community schools. I think it's hard for sometimes English parents to understand the different types of school. So I would say it's really important for the Ukrainian families to understand the different types of school and to be able to choose what type of school they want their child to go to. Also to consider the size of the school. You know, there's one form entry primary schools, there's four form entry primary schools and likewise for secondary schools, they're really big. So about establishing what sort of school the child was at before, what sort of school the child might feel comfortable at, also knowing which schools have spaces. So you're not applying or wasting your time chasing around schools that are already oversubscribed or don't have capacity. And do you think there's anything that I have missed that you think is important to, to mention in terms of, of support to families arriving? I don't know if I mentioned, but having a, I think finding buddies where possible with the children who arrive who speak the, the same languages is a key part so that the child can communicate and speak during the school day. And I think what we've done as well is so if you, if you look in my office now, I don't know if you can see 
stacks and stacks of clothes uh, yeah. all bagged up so that's one of our new families randomly that that somebody gave me on Sunday in church so but it's bagged sensitively so one of the lessons that I learned is not to put a general appeal out because some people use it as an opportunity to throw away second rate clothing or kitchen stuff so you get clothes with holes or stains or broken um, equipment and it's about understanding the dignity and respect that those people deserve so now I don't put out any general appeals I have a couple of people who look for specifically what those families need who go through it and make sure it's the highest quality things so for example if I need clothes for an eight-year-old boy clothes for an eight-year-old boy will come in and nothing else and they will be high quality clothes for an eight-year-old boy or books um, picture books might come in or toys for a particular age child and making sure that's the high quality and vetting it and then giving asking the parent to come in and select what they want from the bags rather than just giving it to them so the I'm giving the parent the control of what they want and what they take mm, that's such a helpful consideration yeah, it was not good the first time I did it. <laughs> cushions and duvets with whole. It was just like, and I was just like, yeah, it was a nightmare. So I've learned. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for um, for answering our questions. That's that's a really helpful insight um, and really helpful, I'm sure, for lots of families and schools preparing uh, to welcome. Thank you.